In this video, I'm gonna be demoing exactly how to send a booster campaign for your campaigns within Klaviyo. So this tutorial is dedicated towards Shopify businesses or to be honest, any e-commerce business out there. In a second, I'll be jumping into a screen share and I'll show you the exact segments you'll need to be creating in order to do this along with the various use cases to actually do a booster campaign within Klaviyo. Let's get into it. So I'm just in a demo account right now to show you how to do this. So first of all, you wanna to go to, into Klaviyo and then you wanna to go to whatever campaign that you actually wanna boost. So you wanna hit clone. So I'm just gonna create a quick demo campaign for the sake of this uh, demo campaign one, clone campaign. And what you wanna do with the original campaign is you want to be scheduling it. So just you know create the content as normal, choose whatever segment you wanna be sending to, uh, continue to content, save and uh, send campaign. So you wanna hit schedule and send and schedule the campaign ahead of time. Let's say I wanna send it on Tuesday, uh, I don't know, 8 a.m. in the morning, 8 a.m. in the morning and then hit schedule. So now what you need to do in, before you schedule the booster campaign, you actually need to create the specific segment to exclude your list. So you wanna to go to list and segments and then you wanna hit create list slash segment and then you want to go to segments and then you want to type in the name of the segment. So this would be, let's just do demo campaign booster, booster exclusion. exclusion. And then for the campaign metrics, you want to do opened email at least once overall time. And then you want to hit add filter. And because I'm on a demo account, there will be no items in the list, but if you were in your actual Klaviyo account, you'll be able to find campaign names. So it should be spelt the exact same as this. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do that. Oops, uh, campaign name, use campaign name, where campaign name equals demo campaign one. Generally speaking, when you start typing it, it should actually come up. So don't worry about it, it will come up. And then you wanna hit create segment, but before you do, you actually wanna create another or condition where you do click email, just to make sure you filter out everyone, as sometimes the cookies, uh, the, the pixels misfire. Uh, so at least once over all time, add filter, choose property campaign name, and then you wanna do demo campaign one. And then you wanna hit create segment. Oh. So once you hit create segment, this will actually auto populate. So uh, the reason why no one's on the list right now is because number one, my list is really small, but more importantly, the demo campaign has not been sent out yet. So let's go back to this campaign. And the way you wanna do it is you wanna hit clone, and then you wanna send to the same exact segment that the uh, original campaign is sent to, and obviously you wanna label it as a booster campaign. You wanna hit clone. It's gonna have the exact same content, but all you need to do different is you need to select don't send to the demo campaign booster exclusion segment. So you wanna then hit continue. And of course you wanna be changing the subject line because ultimately you're optimizing for open rates here. So change the subject line into say something like, uh, I don't know, flash sale 20% off. Hurry. Something along those lines, uh, your code awaits. Whatever the purpose is of that campaign, you wanna make sure your subject line reflects that. And then you wanna hit review and send. So generally speaking, when it comes to campaigns, uh, the delay for boosters can range anywhere from uh, 20 hours to about uh, set up to like 72 hours. Generally speaking, it just depends on the urgency of your offer and things like that. For example, uh, during Black Friday, we were sending out booster campaigns uh, pretty much in the same day. So it depends on number one, the size of the list, the purpose of the campaign, and uh, generally the period, uh, the time period of the year. So when it comes to scheduling, I really recommend scheduling around 20 to 26 hours ahead of time. The reason why you don't wanna be sending, let's say exactly 24 hours uh, in advance is because 
you want to actually give people the, not only the chance to click and open the emails, but also let's say uh, th that person specifically doesn't check their inbox at 7 p.m. In the, in the evening. That's why you want to be hitting them with an, e with an email maybe at 5 p.m., so two hours earlier or maybe two hours later, something along those lines, right? You can even boost the campaign, let's say 36 hours ahead of time, just depending on the uh, time situation there to optimize for open rates. So you want to schedule it ahead of time. So I believe I scheduled the other campaign for the fourth. So let's say I want to do Thursday and I want to do uh, the other one I did, I think 8 a.m. So let's hit them in the afternoon with let's say 5.30, then I would probably schedule it on Wednesday then. Recipients, local time zone, and then you wanna hit schedule. And that's it, there you go. That's how you schedule a booster campaign. Now, you might be wondering what, like, why do you actually wanna do a booster campaign? And the reason that is, is because you wanna be maximizing open rates. Let's say you're sending out a very, very important email to your segments. You really wanna be maximizing the amount of people that actually see the email. So let's say you were doing like a, a sale, for example, and you really wanna make sure everyone knows about it, then you would send a booster campaign because you're always gonna be excluding the people that have already seen the email. So you don't actually need to change the content, you just need to play around with the subject line. This way it saves the your graphics and content branch of your company's time, uh, but also you know it's just as effective. I can really recommend using this tactic when you're running offers or maybe doing product launches, something along those lines, or maybe it's like a holiday season kind of uh, email where you really want to be getting the most amount of people engaged with your emails. So another use case for this is you can actually send booster emails within your flows as well. This is really useful when it comes to boosting the high impact emails within those flows. So that would be the first email of your welcome flow, maybe the first email of your abandoned checkout, and maybe the first email of like an upsell flow or something along those lines. This is something that we implement for our clients. Uh, it just kind of depends on the size of the account. If you feel like you need that, you can also implement this within your flows as well. Highly, highly effective.